Hey guys, so pretty much every Monday I'm going to try to do an MTG Finance segment. Uh, today we're going to talk about Shadows over Innistrad because it just dropped. And we're going to talk about five cards that have gone up and are interesting from my point of view of why they're going up and how expensive they are. We're going to start with Declaration in Stone. First of all, I love the card, one in a white. Uh, you get to exile a target creature, which exile is very important. And then you can exile, it's like Detention Spare, you can exile all creatures with that name. Uh, I think the Investigate part is not a problem at all. I don't see that being a tremendous downside. Because a lot of times they won't have time to investigate for the type of deck that wants to play it. Next, the Hydra. The Hydra is a very interesting speculation right now. Because I didn't expect them to ever be at 9 or $10. But when we're in a meta where Dragonlord Ataka and the Adrazi are kings and they are played and so is Chandra at 6, then, you know, a 6 Hydra that brings you no land gives you, comes into, um, a, it comes into play ability. Very, very good. I like it. Uh, I really do w wish they had Trample instead of Reach. That's my only... Meh, knock against it, right? But overall, very interesting price hike. Next, we're going to look at Always Watching. So Always Watching, one named Double White, non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and Vigilance. I think this card is very good. I still remember when Glorious Anthem back in Urza Saga, I used to play that card all the time, and it wasn't as good as this card. And I think this card does a lot. I uh, and should the next set have a very powerful Falia or human theme element, it's going to push this card. Uh, there's already a lot of great creatures out there that have very good power and toughness um, ratios for their casting cost. This card pushes them over the edge. Uh, the other card that I compare it to is Tempered Steel. Kind of similar, but very different decks. Next. I, you know, I was wrong about this guy. Um, the more I play him, the more I like him. And six is okay. Like, I will never have imagined we're playing six mana planeswalkers in Chandra, Soren. Um, Elspeth was very unique. Um, I think Elspeth is better than this card. But in the current meta, six is really nothing. Like, it's reachable. It's slow enough. There's not a clear aggro deck. It's not a red deck wins that is going to punish you for playing until you have six. For And the, the abilities are very strong. I think he is a little weaker than Elspeth, but he is a game-breaking Planeswalker. Next, we'll talk about my angel, Avacyn. Did not drop in price, and she actually increased in price. Which is fascinating for many, many reasons, but primarily because she is $32.00. What? Very few cards can sustain her price point. Gideon, which was played in every single deck, he's not, what is he, like $20 right now? He couldn't sustain, you know, the price point. I think he was only at $25. Avacyn, will she be able to hold on to the $32 price point? I don't know. I hope she does. And, you know, it's actually very interesting because you can get the checklist cards. If you're just playing casual, you can use a checklist card. Even if you have one Avacyn, you can use four checklists. And then, because you want to play double legendary. Anyways, that's it. Bye, guys.